Well, good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, it is Monday morning, the start of a brand new week, and there's plenty making news. Let us start with the headlines. President accords assent to Criminal Law Amendment Act 2018, stringent punishment including death penalty for those convicted of raping girls below 12 years of age. Amended bill was cleared by Parliament last week. Prime Minister Modi counters opposition on unemployment and other issues, says the campaign of lack of jobs must stop as over 1 crore jobs have been created in last one year. Targets opposition efforts for grand alliance, says it is about dynasties and not development. Road connectivity key to national development, says Vice President M. Vankhya Naidu, laying foundation stone of a section of NH 751 in Bhavnagar in Gujarat, says connectivity essential to bridge urban-rural divide. Calls upon parties sir, to pass motor vehicles amendment bill in Parliament to help reduce road fatalities. Kerala floods are worst since independence, as says Home Minister Rajnath Singh announces immediate central relief of 100 crore rupees after making aerial survey of Idukki and Arnakulam districts. State government's preliminary estimates suggest the loss of over 8,300 crore rupees. And Nobel laureate author V S Naipaul passes away in London at the age of 85. President, the Prime Minister, and other leaders condole demise. President calls it a loss for the world of letters. Prime Minister says major loss for the world of literature. A top story this morning. President Ramnath Kovind has accorded assent to the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2018. It provides a stringent punishment, including death penalty, for those convicted of raping girls below the age of 12. It replaces the Criminal Law Amendment Ordinance that was promulgated on 21st of April. It will further amend the Indian Penal Code, the Indian Evidence Act 1872, the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973, and the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012. The president's assent given yesterday came after Parliament approved the amendments to the law last week. Apart from stringent punishment, it also prescribes the time limit for the investigation of all cases of rape. The deadline for the completion of trial in all rape cases will be two months. A six-month time limit for the disposal of appeals in rape cases has also been prescribed. On to some other news, India handed over the first lot of houses built for Indian origin people in Sri Lanka's tea plantation areas yesterday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended the handing over ceremony of more than 400 houses via video link. He said that the ceremony marked a new high in relationship between the two neighbors. He added that India has kept its promise that was made to the people of Sri Lanka. And Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh was present at the ceremony. in uh, central lanka along with the ministers and indian officials india had committed to 60000 houses out of which 47000 are already ready under the innovative indian housing project prime minister modi said that uh, 350 million dollars it is uh, one of uh, the biggest gra- grant assistance uh, projects of india anywhere in the world that is the success and uniqueness of the participatory owner driven approach of the indian housing project these are not just physical structures but realization of your dreams and not only your dreams and our dreams too we have always dreamt of a peaceful secure and prosperous future for sri lanka where aspiration of all for growth and development are met 
On to some other news now, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has stressed on the need for road connectivity for ensuring national development. He called for ensuring that the rural-urban divide is bridged through connectivity. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that road connectivity is key to national development and added that connectivity has the potential to bring a positive change in the lives of people living in remote corners of rural India. He was addressing a gathering during the foundation stone laying ceremony of four laning of the 33.3 km Adhelia Nari section of NH751 in Bhavnagar in Gujarat. The four laning will be done at a cost of 820 crores and it will make connectivity between Ahmedabad and Bhavnagar easier and would also give impetus to the development of Dholera special investment region gaon ki optical fiber se jodna ka kaam bhi chal raha hai jisse gaon sanchar kranti mein sammilit hokar sugam yatayat aur sanchar ki infrastructure ki mahatvapurna ang hai sadak aur sanchar sampark ke sadhan hi nahi balki vikas ke vahak hai jis prakar sharir mein moti patli zamaniya rakt ko har ang tak pahunchti hai जिससे शरीर का हर अंग स्वस्थ रहे उसी प्रकार सड़कों का विन्यास जितना विस्तृत और सघन होगा विकसित उतना ही सर्वस्पर्श होगा ऑन दी ओकेजन गवर्नर ऑफ गुजरात ओपी कोहली चीफ मिनिस्टर विजय रूपानी Deputy Chief Minister Nitin Bhai Patel, Minister of State for Road Transport and Highways Mansukh Mandavia and other dignitaries were present. The Vice President said that infrastructure development is not only a condition of development of the country but the criteria for development. The Vice President said that connectivity is an essential and important component in bridging the urban-rural divide and asked authorities to give equal priority to rural roads. Gata varsha lagbag 1.5 lakh log सड़क दुर्घटनाओं का शिकार हुए एक अनुमान के अनुसार सड़क दुर्घटनाओं से लगभग तीन परसेंट जी का हानि होती है जब हम देश में राजमार्गों का विस्तार कर रहा है राजमार्गों का दुर्घटनाओं से निरापद बनाने पर भी हमारा चिंता होनी चाहिए राजमार्ग पर स्थान स्थान पर त्वरित चिकित्सा सहायता का व्यवस्था होना चाहिए मुझे आशा है कि ये मोटर व्हीकल अमेंडमेंट बिल जो पार्लियामेंट में प्रस्तावित है प्रावधान वो सड़क दुर्घटनाओं को कम करने में सहायक होंगे मेरा आशा है मैं अनुरोध करता हूं कम से कम अगला सेशन में ये मोटर व्हीकल टैक्स वाला बिल है तो पार्लियामेंट पारित करेगा ऐसा मुझे विश्वास है Expressing concern over the incidents of road accidents, the Vice President said that road safety should be paramount and called for creation of medical infrastructure such as ambulances and first aid centers near highways to provide immediate assistance in case of emergency. On the occasion, he also released the book titled My Journey in Parliament, a compilation of questions raised in Parliament by Mansukh El Mandavia. I am very proud that the book is written in this book and the work of 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 the work. मनसुख भाई की पुस्तक से आपको ज्ञात होगा कि प्रत्येक संसदीय प्रश्न का उत्तर देने के लिए कितना प्रयास किया जाता है कितना धन व्यय होता है ऐसी में यदि संसदीय प्रक्रिया को बाधित कर दिया जाए तो कितना नुकसान होता है पैसा लाखों रुपए खर्च होता है करोड़ों रुपए खर्च होता है प्रश्न के लिए संसद चलाने के लिए The Vice President also called on the youth of the country to take active part in the development process. He also stressed on the need to provide adequate support infrastructure to youth to realize their potential. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news on the other side. Stay tuned. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television.
Rabindranath Tagore was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for his book Gitanjali. In 1950, he composed the music and lyrics for India's national anthem, Jana Gana Mana. And when Bangladesh became independent in 1971, they chose Tagore's song, Amar Shonar Bangla, as its national anthem. Tagore's life and works have made him a cultural icon, studied the world over, even into the 21st century. Temperatures are breaking records around the world. The 21st century has seen the most temperature records broken in recorded history. 2016 was the hottest year on record since 1880, with average temperatures measuring 0.99 degrees Celsius, warmer than the mid 20th century mean. Four years of Modi Cup. The new initiatives, challenges and achievements. I am going to start my experience in my experience. We are not going to be able to look at the development of the development of the country. In the sound and the sound of the sound, there is no relationship between the sound and the sound. I do not foresee farmers' income getting doubled just by uh, farming itself. It's time the farmer has to move towards value addition of what he grows in the farm. So Startup is essentially kickstarting of new thinking in India. Meet the Minister Monday to Friday at 10:30 p.m. only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Railway Minister Piyush Goyal has said that a 50% reservation will be given to women in the recruitment of a railway protection force. Inaugurating various rail projects in Patna on Sunday, he said that about 10,000 jobs will be created in the RPF. He said that the recruitment process will be fully computerized to maintain transparency. He added that CCTV cameras will be installed at 6,000 stations and important trains. At the event, he inaugurated the Raksol Narakatiya Ganj broad gauge line and flagged off a passenger train on this section. He also inaugurated the new rail line between Birol and Harnagar in Darbhanga and flagged off three passenger trains on this section. और मुझे आप सबसे शेयर करते हुए खुशी होती है कि अब जब हम अगले लगभग साढ़े नौ दस हजार आरपीएफ के जवानों की भर्ती का काम शुरू करेंगे उसमें पचास प्रतिशत महिलाओं के लिए आरक्षित रखेंगे जिससे इनके काम में और गति आए और हम पूरे तरीके से महिलाओं को और बच्चों की सुरक्षा के प्रति रेलवे की सिस्टम को और अपने आप को समर्पित कर पाए साथ ही साथ हम पूरे जो स्टेशन है देश भर में लगभग 6000 स्टेशन और जो प्रमुख गाड़ियां चलती हैं उन सब में भी सीसीटीवी कैमरा लगाने का कार्यक्रम जल्दी शुरू करने वाले हैं जिससे सुरक्षा के दृष्टि से यात्रियों को और उचित सुविधाएं मिले और इस प्रकार की जो गलत and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has countered the opposition's charges of a lack of jobs and also spoken on other issues like the Indian economy, GST and NRC in Assam. He has said that the opposition must stop its campaign of unemployment as over one crore jobs have been created in the last one year. The Prime Minister also spoke about the opposition's efforts for a grand alliance, saying that it is not based on ideology but personal benefits. Countering the picture projected by opposition of a gloomy economic situation and claims of rising unemployment, 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that more than 1 crore jobs have been created in the last one year, hence the campaign of lack of jobs needs to stop now. In an interview to news agency ANI, the PM said and I quote, When Indian economy is growing fastest among the major economies, how will the jobs market not expand? When investment into and the pace of execution of infrastructure projects like making roads, laying down rail lines, setting up power generation including solar parks and transmission lines is at all-time high, how come the jobs will not be created? Unquote. On GST issue, the Prime Minister said and I quote the Congress President tried his best to provoke people against GST during Gujarat elections. Why did the people reject him? It must not be forgotten that people of this country, particularly the business community, have supported GST and adopted it wholeheartedly, unquote. Speaking on the opposition's Mahagat Bandhan in 2019, the Prime Minister said and I quote the Mahagat Bandhan is about dynasties, not about development. The Mahagat Bandhan is not about any union of minds or ideas, but about rank opportunism. The only question is whether they will break up before the election or after. The Prime Minister also answered a question on the issue of National Register of Citizens in Assam. The PM said and I quote, I want to assure the people that no citizen of India will have to leave the country. As per the due process, all possible opportunities will be given to get their concerns addressed, unquote. Modi also spoke on various incidents of mob lynching. The PM said and I quote, even a single incident is one too many and deeply unfortunate. My party and I have spoken in clear words on multiple occasions against such actions and such a mindset. It is all on record, unquote. Speaking on women empowerment, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said and I quote, No country can progress if its women are not equal partners in the development process. Going a step ahead of women development, we are working towards women-led development, unquote. On India-Pak relations, the Prime Minister hoped that under the new government, Pakistan would work for a safe, secure, stable and prosperous region, free from terror and violence. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's listen into some of uh, the reactions uh, to the Prime Minister's interview. Prime Minister Ji has said a lot about this. And whatever they have said, they have the nature of the party and the nature of the party. If the Vipaksh इन्हीं के सरकारी आंकड़ों के आधार पर यह कह रहा है कि जॉब्स नहीं क्रिएट हो रही और प्रधानमंत्री जी ने तो स्वयं कहा कि पिछले साल भर में एक करोड़ रोजगार पैदा किए तो इन्होंने तो दो करोड़ का वादा किया था इट इज ऑल हैपनिंग मोस्टली इन बीजेपी रूल्ड स्टेट्स कैन ही डिनाई द मॉब लिंचिंग इन गुजरात कैन ही डिनाई दी मॉब लिंचिंग विच इज गोइंग ऑन इन राजस्थान मोदी जी ने यह भी कहा है कि हर साल एक करोड़ जॉब देने की बात कही है उस बारे में लोगों ने शंका भी ली है कि एक करोड़ जॉब कहाँ पैदा हो गए किसको मिले हैं तो हो सकता है लेकिन मैं मुंबई में हूँ और लोग आज भी रोजगार के लिए तरस रहे हैं ये बात सही है किधर ले जाना चाहते हो खाली राजनीत करने के लिए आप ये सब कर रहे हो कितने लोगों को आपने डिपोर्ट किया पिछले चार साल में जरा बताइए ना मैं समझता हूं कि शायद यूपीए की सरकार ने ज्यादा बांग्लादेशियों को डिपोर्ट किया था बनिस्बत पिछले चार साल की एनडीए की सरकार में मोदी जी की सरकार ने On to news from Kerala now, where uh, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh on uh, Sunday announced an additional 100 crore rupees uh, flood relief for the state. The announcement was made after taking an aerial overview of the situation in the state. Rajnath Singh also approved the release of the second installment of 80.25 crore rupees in advance for the state disaster response force to supplement the efforts of the state government. After interacting with the flood victims, Rajnath Singh assured the state government that all resources would be provided from the central government to tackle the situation. Over a thousand people, including elderly women and children, have been rescued in the area where the Indian Army's 10 columns are working. I understand the sufferings of people of Kerala from the present crisis. Since assessment of damage will take time, I hereby announce immediate relief in advance of amount 100 crore. 
Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan on Sunday informed that as per the preliminary report, the total damage due to floods in the state is estimated to be worth uh, more than 8,000 crore rupees. The state government has also requested the centre to declare the calamity a rare severity. The Chief Minister had informed that at least 37 people had been killed and six others were missing in rain-related incidents in the state. Meanwhile, External Affairs Minister Sushma Sorat on Sunday announced that uh, passports that are damaged in floods in Kerala will be replaced free of cost by the government. In a tweet, Sushma Swarat said that there are unprecedented floods in Kerala causing huge damage. She advised people to contact the concerned passport Kendra. And the Election Commission has made uh, small changes uh, to the present uh, VVPAT failures. Uh, Chief Election Commissioner O.P. Rawat said that a small hood on top of the contrast sensor and paper roll that does not soak humidity are some of uh, the ingenious measures now that have been adopted to prevent a failure of uh, paper trail machines in extreme conditions. After failure of the VVPAT machines in the recent uh, bipoles uh, for four Lok Sabha seats, including Kairana and Bhandara Gondi, and 10 assembly seats, the Election Commission's Technical Expert Committee carried out a root cause analysis and Rawat said that the committee found that the direct light falling on the contrast sensor of the paper trail machine led to the malfunction. He said that the committee also found that a certain type of paper roll soaked humidity resulting in the failure of the paper to move properly on the spoof of the VVPAT machine while printing the results. The VV pads are used in all polling stations, but as of now, results of EVMs and VV pads are matched in one polling station per constituency. Sir V.S. Naipaul died on Sunday at the age of 85. Lady Naipaul confirmed that her husband had died peacefully in London. During his 50 years of career, he published more than 30 books, both of fiction and non-fiction, including critically acclaimed novels such as A House for Mr. Biswas, In a Free State and A Bend in the River. And he won various uh, coveted literary awards. Naipaul was famous for his subtle and piercing prose and had his uh, share of controversies as well. V.S. Naipaul was born in Trinidad in 1932 into an Indian family. He moved to England at 18 after receiving a scholarship to University College, Oxford. He will be remembered as a master of prose, both fiction and non-fiction, with a keen eye for reality. President Ramnath Kovind, while paying tribute to Naipaul, called his books as penetrative exploration of faith, colonialism and the human condition in his home in the Caribbean and beyond. He tweeted that it was a loss for the world of letters and for the broader school of Indo-Anglian literature. Prime Minister Modi tweeted Sir V. S. Naipaul will be remembered for his extensive works which covered diverse subjects ranging from history, culture, colonialism, politics and more. His passing away is a major loss to the world of literature. Author Salman Rushdie tweeted, We disagreed all our lives about politics, about literature and I feel sad as if I just lost a beloved older brother. Travel writer Paul Thirox, who mended his relation with Naipaul in 2015 after a long feud, said he will go down as one of the greatest writers of our time. He also never wrote falsely. Over his career, he wrote 15 works of fiction and about as many of non-fiction, including diaries and essays. Naipaul's early works of fiction were written in his 50s. The Mystic Masur, the suffrage of Elvira and a house for Mr. Biswas were all set in Trinidad. Naipaul was a tireless traveller. By 1962, he wrote his first travel book, The Middle Passage. A number of critics rejected him as a third world writer, writing for the first world. However, his diamantine prose won him a series of awards, including the Booker Prize in 1971, a knighthood in 1989 and the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2001. He received a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth in 1989. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On sports news, India suffered a 159-run innings defeat in the second test against England after yet another batting failure on day four at Lords, leaving the struggling visitors 0-2 behind in the five-match series. Indian batsmen folded up for just 130 runs in 47 overs. 
James Anderson with the four wicket uh, once again toyed with the opposition, taking his match tally to nine. England, uh, that resumed at overnight score for 356 for six, declared their first innings at 396 for seven earlier on Sunday, with uh, Chris Wokes uh, staying unbeaten on 137. Hardik Pandya was the most economical bowler as he finished with the figures of three for six, followed by Mohammad Shami, who scalped three wickets for 96 runs. Ishan Sharma also chipped in with a wicket. And with this win, England have now taken a 2-0 lead in the ongoing five-match series, having won the opening match against India by 31 runs. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching.